I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This evening, we're speaking about how that Putin has a plan for the United States. I kind of gather this information as I've been examining quite a few of his latest speeches and interviews that he's been giving publicly in and around the world, and even going back as far as 2008, looking at things that Vladimir Putin has stated, as well as looking at what the United States has done over well, since quite a number of years, looking back here at George Bush's speech addressed to the Congress after 9-11 on September the 20th, where he addressed the nation. ABC covered this particular report here, and he talked about it being a war on terror. And it was a campaign launched to be able to justify going in and fighting Iraq and, of course, other nations in the region, Afghanistan, Syria, ultimately, and the final stage of some of these battles that have gone on all in the Middle East. And what's it all been for in the first place? After all, we find out Saddam Hussein never had any weapons of mass destructions. But it doesn't mean that Saddam Hussein was not guilty of gassing his own people or anything of that nature there. But clearly, there was not the evidence that the American public was lied to about, in fact. And, that's another thing that Vladimir Putin has brought out quite a bit recently, is that many of the things that the U.S. media has been feeding the, the American public over the years has been flat-out lies. He even has challenged September 11th in saying that, that he actually has the inside information that would actually speak about the truth of what really happened on 9-11. Of course, Vladimir Putin doesn't believe for even a second that, that, the, uh, that, that it was uh, done by terrorists, but rather Vladimir Putin clearly believes that the job was actually an inside job. It was done in order to get the American public behind the U.S. government to go to war in Iraq. Was it really an oil war? Well, the point, though, that we're looking at tonight, and I'm not saying that 9-11 is or is not an inside job, but the question that I'm seeing here is I've watched how the United States presidents, George Bush Sr., George Bush, and even Barack Obama, have been statesmen for war, drumming up the support, getting the world behind them in order to be able to go and attack another country. In one of Putin's interviews that he did, he made a very interesting statement. He said that Russia has only two bases in foreign countries. And the United States has a huge number of bases all over the world. He blames the United States as being an imperialistic nation. When you begin to think about it, it kind of makes you wonder. In fact, some of the places our bases are at are because of wars we've been in, such as Japan. We were in a war with Japan, defeated Japan. Well, we have a base in Japan as well. We were in a war with Adolf Hitler in Germany in the European theater. We have a base in Germany, more than one. We have bases in every country we've ever been in war with, including Vietnam and other different countries around the world. Anywhere the U.S. engages in battle, even in Iraq, we have a military base in Iraq as well. Maybe the President Putin actually could be right when it comes to this uh, accusation against the United States administration that it's an imperialistic regime. In fact, another very interesting one here was uh, in an interview with, with the, um, this is with uh, um, the famous actor there. Um, gosh, I don't know why I'm going blank on his name there. But, but anyway, um, this, this gentleman here who's, whoo, gosh, what is his name? Why would I go blank on him? I don't want to say Chuck Norris. I know that's not the case there. That's... Um, Hmm. Let me see if I can find it real quick, because Steven Seagal it finally came to me. I couldn't find it on the screen. Anyway, with Steven Seagal here in an interview that he was doing there with RT News, he had taken a lot of criticism because he's actually been supportive of Vladimir Putin. Uh, he's even been 
considered an official diplomat of some, some regard after Putin's request between Russia and the United States. But even, he, he is, of course, he's a staunch Republican and very much backs all the, the different Republican congressmen and senators. But he himself called the Obama administration a regime. He doesn't officially say the Obama administration, but he calls the current administration a regime. Very interesting words to say the least, but what is this all about in the first place? What, are we, what am I looking at when I begin to examine what Vladimir Putin is doing in and around the world? Not, not to mention that, as I've stated in the, the past here, since June uh, of this year, that Vladimir Putin has become the Vatican's new warlord. It seems to, to me that that's who he's actually fighting for, is for Rome. But it's also, what I've noticed, is that Putin has come on the stage as a major world power, and he's being as totally unchallenged by the United States. Now, the United States is very much challenged in words, but they've not challenged him in any other direct way. Now, to me, the only reason that that could happen is because the Vatican is now backing Putin and not the United States and NATO and their allies. And in fact, since, since Russia has actually been in, in, the, um, in the theater war there with um, the different people in, um, in the Middle East area in Syria, one of the things also that I have noticed is that Putin has been very, very forward. He's made threats to Turkey recently that if they were going to arm and side with ISIL forces or ISIS forces there, that there would be heavy consequences to pay. He actually brings in the, uh, the, the, um, the ambassador to Turkey that's in the, from, from, the, uh, from the embassy there in Moscow and flat out tells him, that if Turkey doesn't stop backing the ISIS or ISIL people, that they will cut off the ties with Turkey. And of course, there would be consequences to pay for it. All the NATO allies in the region, or what few there are, of course, in the Middle East, there's not many NATO, NATO allies except for Turkey and Saudi Arabia, of course, Israel as well. But Russia's there not playing games. And Russia is steadily building popular, popular opinion around the world for his case against the United States. And on numerous, numerous, numerous occasions, he's constantly calling the United States an imperialistic regime. He's made no bones about it, even in this particular interview here on Valdi, Valdi, Valdi. He actually discusses and talks about the U.S. and what their ambitions are. And he accuses the United States of being an imperialistic nation making wars and occupying lands all over the world. Vladimir Putin even goes so far as to say that is in Russia's own case, he said, we have enough land we don't need anymore. He said, but some nations, even our partners there, are willing to go and take lands anywhere they so desire. He even accused the United States of actually grabbing people from around the world and imprison them at their own will, and nobody does anything about it. You know, if you think about it, if we go back to when George Bush was president of the United States and he was justifying his bid to go and fight with uh, Saddam Hussein, he as well was selling, as well as his diplomats, his secretary of state, they were all building the case for war, talking about how Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. They called Iran the axis of evil. Many different statements like this we have gotten. Now, are, is it evil? Of course. As we've seen with uh, Muslim or Islamic type of regimes, many of them are very brutal in their attacks. They, they kill one another. All kinds of evils that take place. It's unbelievable, some of the things that go on. But, nonetheless, if you watch what has happened in our own politics in the United States, there was always a selling of the, of the public, not just the American public, but also getting the rest of the world in behind the battle. But what I've been finding through this investigation, though, that's been very, uh, very alarming, that I've done as I've looked at this, is I've begun to realize, and these are things that have been made public since they've happened, 
but Russia's actually been right in a lot of the things that they're saying, accusing, whether it be the Bush administration or the Obama administration, they've been accurate in the things they've accused them of doing. Such as a good example is back in 2008, um, George Bush accused Russia of attacking uh, Georgia, the country of Georgia, on its uh, southern border. Only later have we learned by different news reporters that have proven that it was not so, that it was the Georgian rebels who were backed by the United States that actually attacked their own people. Russia, though, however, had kind of gotten wind that this could happen, and so Russia was prepared to take action. The same thing that we learned about Ukraine. It wasn't Russia that was coming in trying to take over Ukraine, but Russia was watching carefully the, the events that were transpiring in Ukraine as the United States was backing different neo-Nazi regimes there in order to topple the government. In the movie, The Way Home, or the documentary, The Way Home, that Vladimir Putin was in, he also mentioned that he was willing to use, if necessary, nuclear force if America didn't back off once the battle began to get hot and heavy. That was after they took over Crimea. It's been a very interesting road, needless to say. Let me just show something to you, though, that I find very interesting. Because Russia, not too long ago, he was challenged by a reporter uh, and the, the reporter was from uh, the BBC, and he accused Russia of being aggressive. He accused Russia of starting the Ukrainian crisis and, and different other conflicts around the world. And then Russia brought back in something that I thought was very interesting. Russia turned around and put the reporter in his place. He said to him the facts. He said, you say that Russia is the aggressor. He said, well, let's look at the record. Let's look at the facts. He said, since 1990, or in the 90s, Russia suspended all of the flights that they were doing, the spy flights, near other countries, in this case being the United States. He said, we stopped doing them all along. He said, trying to make a partnership with the United States after the, Soviet, the collapse of the Soviet Union. He said, but the United States has never stopped flying right next to our borders with nuclear bombs on board of their warplanes. He said, not just in Alaska, but on both coasts. And he said also, he says, it's not just Alaska that has nuclear warheads pointed at our country. He said, so does Poland, Lithuania, many of the Eastern European countries where the United States has brought in nuclear warheads into their countries as well and are aiming them on every one of our borders, the United States is slowly but surely surrounding the country of Russia. And many of the people, including Jeb Bush, that is running for president, has spoken very clearly, and Hillary Rodham Clinton as well, that they will deal with Russia once they get in office. A lot of bold statements are being made that is going to push the United States into a world war. Or maybe it won't be a world war. It may just be a war between Russia and the United States. Putin has said quite clearly that he's trying to avoid such an action as this. But the way things keep building and the tensions keep growing, it's as if Putin is letting the world know he's got a justified reason if he does attack the United States. He's building a case just like George Bush built a case for Saddam Hussein and to, and to attack Iraq. And all that they needed was for Iraq to invade Kuwait to justify that as well. And of course, for 2,000 American citizens to be murdered. The question is though, is how were they really murdered? There is enough as evidence to suggest that yes, it could have been an inside job but I'm not a specialist to say yes or no. Russia claims that it has satellite footage that can prove that indeed it was an inside job. Who knows? Who knows for sure? But when we go back and we find out that the United States, it was actually claimed, according to Putin, that the United States actually had soldiers on the ground when Georgia attacked its own people to overthrow or to, to overthrow what, what uh, Russia had in there as a government. 
Well, here's something that's interesting that you may not be aware of. In this particular clip here that you're seeing now, this is the United States Army Colonel Michael Foster, who is actually stating the United States Army is officially in the country of Georgia now. They're holding joint exercises with the Georgian government. And that's put Russia on edge once again. What do we expect Russia to do when we're constantly moving troops, missiles, bombs, and everything else to totally surround Russia? Why are we doing this? Do we really think that there's a justified, justified means in doing this? Is there really justification? Is Russia really that big of a threat to the United States? It may be that Russia is not so much a threat to the United States, but I believe that Vladimir Putin is giving clear signals to the United States and to the U.S. people because he's also said in many of his statements, we're not against Americans. We're not against the values that the United States people have, but rather it's the administration and the way that the government and those that run the U.S. government, the way they do, this is what he's against. I have a feeling that things may not go so well in the near future. I have a feeling from what we're seeing, especially in the case of Syria, if you think about it, really Russia and the United States are at war with one another. Putin has asked over and over the United States to give him the targets where ISIS is. Let me know which targets we should be attacking. And then they didn't respond whatsoever. So then Putin asked the next question, officially through proper channels, what targets should we not attack? Again, total silence on the United States' part. No answer whatsoever. Putin says it's quite clear the United States does not want to be a part of getting rid of ISIS. And of course, in another news interview, he tells us why. And it's because the United States is the one that armed ISIS in the begin with. And it's also the United States that is backing the Free Syrian Army to topple Basra Assad. And so therefore, all the people that the United States has backed in the region here, the U.S. is having to combat, or excuse me, uh, Russia is having to combat them. So what is he to do? He's actually at war with the United States in an indirect way. But this time, it's no longer Russia sitting on the sideline just uh, uh, arming the nation uh, of Basra, Bashar al-Assad's forces. Now Russia actually took and brought their equipment, their manpower, and everything else into the country to do the fighting itself. The question is, is will the United States eventually step up and do the same thing? Because surely the United States said that they were there to combat ISIS. Of course, they haven't done hardly anything to ISIS. All they've done is armed and armed and armed and rearmed more and more the forces that are against Basra Assad. And then at the same token, you have to look at Israel. Now, I'm all for my own people for sure. But what did the Israeli government do when they take and just drop out cluster bombs on Basar al-Assad's forces, knowing that Russia is there backing Basar al-Assad. Now, I do believe, as I'm watching the things that are unfolding there in the Middle East, that Russia is part of the coalition. He's part of that coalition that is against Israel. I do not think that he'll get directly involved with a war with Israel. But he is part of that coalition of Psalm 83. The Confederacy, actually, would be a better way to put it. The Confederacy of Psalm 83. He is part of the tabernacles of Esau, or the tents of Esau. Because it's the Russian Orthodox Church, a Russian Orthodox president, that is going along with the Vatican's plans to do what they're doing in the Middle East. Because Rome wants Jerusalem liberated for its own, for, for its own means. But if the United States is not going to do that for, for Rome, then Rome has had to turn to another player, one that is willing to step in and one that's not going to play games in order to secure Israel for the sake of their own desires. And this is exactly what we see that is happening in the Middle East. All the Arabic nations are in play. The Intifada, 
fully on its way. And now even begin, they're beginning to organize the Intifada. One of the jihad top officials there um, has actually come out and said that very thing on the Israel National News. It's the Islamic Jihad leader. Uh, his name uh, is uh, Muhammad al-Hindi, a senior member of the Islamic Jihad movement, expressed his support for declaring the recent wave of terror but, uh, to be an intifada and for settling, setting realistic goals to achieve. Now they're actually wanting to be more methodical in what they're doing. Not just a bunch of ra random stabbing attacks, yeah, true, there's been far more Palestinians killed in this wave of violence than there has been Israelis, but nonetheless, what do you expect Israelis to do when they're being attacked on a daily basis? And again, it's to destabilize the nation of Israel. Russia is ally to practically every single Arabic nation around Israel. And because of him being allies to them, Russia could actually have an influence on these nations to stop their attacks. Vladimir Putin has a very close relation with Mahmoud Abbas. Why doesn't he intervene there? If he's truly an ally with Israel, why doesn't he intervene? And yet Hezbollah, speaking, Nasrallah, speaking about they're going to attack Israel. And they also are praising what's going on. Another article here on Israel National News, another thing that just came up with Nasrallah, Israel is America's contractor in the region. So the rhetoric against the United States and of course the plans to attack Israel is all on the playing board. My question is though, when will Russia turn against the United States? To me it's only a matter of time. All the evils that are happening against Israel, though, could it be that Russia will find the need to weaken the United States before dealing with Israel, or will they deal with Israel, and as a result, the United States will get hit as well? Now, when I say deal with Israel, remember, friends, God will step in to intervene for His people. It's not going to be easy for Israel in the beginning. And when I say God will intervene, the question is, is when will he intervene? He does say he's gathered all the nations down there for battle. And it's not all the nations are not there as of yet. Will more nations come there to Israel? It's hard to say as of right now, but clearly Psalm 83 is on the threshold of being fulfilled. A lot of things are taking place. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. I pray that you have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow night, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shalom and good evening.